Because PCLs share code at the binary level, the platform-specific APIs cannot be added directly into source files that you have in the project. In addition, a lot of other essential APIs are missing as well. This again is because PCLs are limited to the features that are common to the frameworks that you've selected as a target. For example, you've already seen that no file access APIs are present. We have a system IO stream reader class, but only the constructors that take a stream are actually present. We've got a few approaches we can use here. The first is we can move the code that uses the unavailable API into the platform specific code and then take the results from that and set properties or fields that are exposed by shared classes in our PCL. For small amounts of basic data, this is a perfect approach. It's simple and it's easy to implement. However, if the data is more complicated and requires processing, then this approach would produce duplicated code across our platform specific projects, which ideally we'd like to avoid. So a second approach would be to just define what we have to do in the platform specific code and then pass in something that the shared code can work with. In our IO example, we saw the lowest common denominator supported by all the platforms is the stream class. We can open the file for read or write in the platform specific project and then pass in a created stream into our shared code, which would then let us centralize the parsing and processing of the data in one area. Only the creation of the stream, which uses unavailable APIs, would have to be done in the platform specific area. Again, this approach works well for one or two things, but beyond that, this can get kind of cumbersome, and in some cases, there aren't any supported classes to even work with. For example, system security is almost completely unavailable in every PCL type. In these cases, we can put a little architectural thought behind our design and move to an abstraction that allows us to provide an implementation from our platform-specific code that allows us to leverage shared code where we can, but defer specific operations off to an implementation that is platform specific. This approach tends to be more flexible than the first two variations, and is really almost a combination of the two. So let's look at two ways to accomplish this. The first way we can do this is to expose events or delegates on PCL types, and then provide some basic behavior in the platform specific assembly. This allows unique platform specific code to be called by the shared platform independent code. So let's take a practical real example, dialing the phone. This is something that's done differently by each platform and therefore requires that we access some platform specific API to do it. We could have a class in the PCL shared code which provides a make call method, but notice that it calls a delegate function named make call impl. This is where the platform code must be injected. And so what we'll do is we'll have in our iOS platform project, a piece of code that actually assigns that delegate. Notice that it's a public static, and keep in mind that our platform projects always have access to all the things that are in the PCL. And so from our iOS platform project, we can supply a delegate that then does the work of dialing the phone. So that way, when we invoke this make call method and it calls the delegate, we end up in our platform specific project where we can do whatever we need to to actually accomplish the feature. If the logic you want to execute is more significant, or you'd like to put a little more architecture to it, you can define a formal abstraction for the platform-specific implementation. This is often done using an interface, but if you had parts of the code which could be shared, an abstract class could also be used. The idea is that some portion of the class is platform-specific and must be implemented separately for each platform. Again, say we want to use the phone features of our device. We could define an interface in the PCL which gives us the functionality we need, the ability to place a call. Here we're going to pass in a string representing the number to dial, and we're going to return a boolean indicating a success or a failure. We could then provide separate, unique implementations of this interface for each platform that we need to support. These implementations would be in our platform-specific projects, so they could take advantage of the APIs that we can't use directly in our shared code. The PCL code will then use this dialer interface to actually invoke the logic. But first, we need to somehow gain access to that implementation. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a technique called dependency injection. This is a fairly popular design pattern where we pass in the implementation that's necessary in the form of our abstraction, in this case, our iDialer interface. And there's a couple ways we can do this. The first way is we can inject the implementation into a public property. Here we're going to use a static property for simplicity, but you could set an instance property that the platform project has access to as well. So notice, we've defined a static class called dialer, presumably it has our make call method, and then in our iOS project, we assign the dialer instance property to be our implementation, which is phonedialer.ios. We can also inject the implementation through a constructor. This is particularly useful if we have required things in our application that, that it cannot run without. In this case, the platform project instantiates the dialer class with all the required dependencies as part of a static factory method named create. 
We assign the delegate in the creator function as part of our platform project, and when the PCL invokes the delegate, it gets back a fully constructed dialer class, which then it can use to dial the phone. In this way, the majority of the dialer implementation is shared because it's defined in the PCL.